Today I will share with you how to make a one minute travel vlog video using the Insta360 ONE X2 with the Best360 monopod, all edited using the Insta360 app, so you can make a video which looks like this. Let's go through shot by shot how this video was made. For the first shot, I had the One X2 on the Best360 150cm carbon fiber selfie stick. So it's really light in my hand and I had it extended all the way so I could get as close to the action as possible and point it towards the birds flying. And then I just walked very slowly across the riverbank so that I would get some motion in my video and it would look more cinematic in slow motion. This is the first shot of my video and this was shot in 4K, 50 frames per second. The first thing I'm going to do is change the aspect ratio to the aspect ratio I want to publish my video in and this will give me a better idea of what's going to be in shot. The next thing I'm going to do is trim this video down to 1.5 seconds, add a half speed and this will make a three second slow-mo shot. So to do this, I'm going to tap the trim icon, go to the part of the shot where it's more dramatic. So over here where you can see lots of birds in the sky, I'll tap the scissor icon and this is where I want my shot to begin. And I'm gonna drag this until it says 1.5 seconds over here. This is the duration of the highlighted shot. Get as close to it as you can tap the scissor icon, tap the tick to confirm. So now I have a 1.5 second shot. The next thing I'm going to do is add pivot points to choose which view I want to show my audience. So I'll reframe it over here where there are plenty of birds in view. Add a pivot point here, change the view to linear. So now I can see the birds more clearly. Then go to the end of the shot add a pivot point here to maintain this view. The next thing I'm going to do is add the speed to slow down my 1.5 second shot by half to make it a three second shot. So to do this, hover away from a pivot point and then you'll get the speed option. Go to the start of the shot, tap the half speed icon, drag it across the shot, tap the tick to confirm, and now I have a slow motion three second shot. For the second shot, I used the exact same setup, the One X2 on the Best 360 selfie stick. I had it fully extended pointing towards the river and then I just slowly brought it up and then behind me. And just make sure that there's no one behind you when you have the stick fully extended. I want to start this shot when I start to bring the selfie stick up which is about here. So I'll tap the trim icon, tap the scissor icon, and I wanna make this shot about three and a half seconds. Tap the scissor icon and tap the tick icon. So now I have a three and a half second shot. At the beginning of my shot, I want to reframe to show myself. So I'll add a pivot point here and change the view to linear so it's not distorted. Then go to the first second add a pivot point on myself again. Then over the next second, I'm going to reframe to the right. I'm going to start revealing the river. Then go to the end of the shot and then finally reveal the river. And if I play this back, you have a shot which looks like this. 
For the third shot, I had the One X2 on the Best360 selfie stick, and I pointed the selfie stick towards the water, and then I just followed this circular path of the fountain like this, and then I just reframed in post to look at the ducks. I'm going to trim this shot until the ducks are in view. So I'll just keep going forward until they are both in the water, or we can see them go into the water. So about here, tap the scissor icon. So this is where my shot will begin. Now make this shot three and a half seconds long, about here, tap the scissor icon, tap the tick to confirm. Then I'll go to the beginning of my shot, reframe to show both ducks in view, add a pivot point here, change the view to linear, then go to the middle of the shot, reframe to show both ducks, then go to the end of the shot and reframe to show both ducks over here as well. And if I play this back, you now have a shot which looks like this. For the fourth shot, I used the One X2 on the Best 360 monopod and positioned it very close to the lake. And I left it there and then walked away about a meter or two. This is so that the animals are not afraid to come closer to the camera because I'm not there. And then I was able to capture the birds in the water. I'm going to start this shot just before I see the birds swim away. About here, tap the trim icon, tap the scissor icon, and I'll make this shot three seconds long. About here, tap the scissor icon, tap the tick icon. So now I have a three second shot. Then at the beginning of this shot, I'm going to add a pivot point first to reveal the sky. Change the view to linear. And then in the middle of the video, I will reveal the birds in the water. Add a pivot point here. Then at the end of the shot, just to make it a little bit more dynamic, I'll add a pivot point here and change the view to wide. And this will have a zoom out effect. But you can see when I did that, the horizon is gone curved. Well, there is a way to cheat this. So if I remove this pivot point, I'm going to position the horizon in the center of the video, add a pivot point here and change the view to wide. And as long as you add the horizon in the center of your video, you will always get a straight line. So now you have a shot which looks like this. For the fifth shot, I had the One X2 on the Best360 selfie stick. I just held it in my hand like this, extended by one stem, and then I just walked very slowly towards the pond. I want a three second shot walking up to the lake, and I'll start the shot over here. So I'll tap the trim icon, the scissor icon, and drag this until it's three seconds, about here, and tap the scissor icon, Tap the tick to confirm. So now I have a three second shot. Then at the beginning of my shot, I want to look up towards the tree leaves and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees about here. Add a pivot point. Then one second later, I'm going to rotate it back towards facing the lake, which is here. Add a pivot point and I'll change this to linear so it zooms in and I'll change this pivot point to linear as well. And now you have this virtual camera movement rotating looking at the tree leaves above my head. And then over the next second I want to look down towards the lake over here. And at the end of the shot I want to maintain this view here and add a pivot point here. So if I play this shot back, we now have a shot which looks like this. For the sixth shot, I had the One X2 on the Best360 selfie stick, fully extended in the air, and then I just gradually brought the stick down until the One X2 was dipped into the pond. 
The sixth shot will be a water transition into the seventh shot. So over here, I want to cut the video when the camera gets submerged into the water, about here. So let's trim this shot, tap the trim icon, the scissor icon, and I'll drag the timeline until the camera gets submerged, about here, and tap the scissor icon. Now my shot is too short, I want it to be three seconds long. So I'm going to tap the highlighted part and then you'll get two white markers with two black arrows. I'm going to drag the start of the video longer until it's three seconds long and tap the tick to confirm. Now to make this shot more dynamic, I'm going to add pivot points and play with the zoom. So I'm going to position the statue in the middle, add a pivot point and leave it as ultra wide, then go to the end of the shot, add a pivot point and change it to linear. So now the shot will zoom in as it plays. So now you have a shot which looks like this. For the seventh shot, I also used the One X2 on the Best360 selfie stick fully extended, but this shot was very tricky because it had to go through these drain railings, which were like this, and the lens had to go through it, and it was much thinner than this. Um, so I had it fully extended, and I put the lens in like this, and then turned it around again so it's facing the right way. And then as I brought it up very slowly, I then turned it on its side, brought it out, and then slowly turned it back, to the front and then brought it in the air to lift up to see the view of the lake. The start of the seventh shot needs to match the end of the sixth shot. So I want the seventh shot to begin when the camera is just coming out the water, which is about here. So I'll tap the trim icon, the scissor icon. This is where the shot will begin. And I'll end the shot once the lake is revealed which is about here, and tap the scissor icon and the tick icon to confirm. So now I have an eight second shot. Then I'll go to the beginning of my shot and I'll start the reframe over here, add a pivot point and change the view to linear. Then one second later, I will add a pivot point here to maintain this view. And then as the camera comes up, over the next two seconds, I want to reframe to look towards this water falling over here. Then over the next second, just before the camera comes past the drain, I want to look down towards the water, add a pivot point here. Then as it comes past the drain, I want to add a pivot point here, just looking at it. Then about a second later, I want to reveal the lake over here and then do a slight pan towards the other side of the lake. So, so far we have a video which looks like this. And it's a little bit long, it's eight seconds long, so I want to make this shot shorter. So I'm going to add speed about here. So I'll tap the speed icon, tap eight times speed and drag the speed until the lake is revealed about here and tap the tick to confirm. And if I play this back, we now have a shot which looks like this. For the eighth shot, I used the One X2 on the Best360 selfie stick, fully extended. And when I hold the selfie stick in my hand, I try and make my arm as straight as possible so it doesn't look like I'm holding a stick. And I keep the One X2 as eye level as possible to make sure there's the least amount of distortion and the best view possible. So first I want to trim this down to a three second shot. And I want this shot to begin over here. So I'll tap trim the scissor icon and make this shot three seconds long. Tap the scissor icon and tap the tick to confirm. Then I'll go to the beginning of my shot, reframe to look at myself. So this is the view I want to show my audience and add a pivot point. 
Then one second later, I'm going to add a pivot point and tap Viewfinder. I'm going to pinch inwards with two fingers until it turns into a tiny planet and then rotate myself to the top. Then I'm going to hold down the record button and do a zoom in by dragging to the left and then dragging it to the right to zoom out again. So press record, zoom in and then zoom out. Tap the tick to confirm and then you can play it back to see how it turned out. And if you're unhappy with your selection, you can tap this section, tap the delete icon and do it again. So I'll go here, add a pivot point, viewfinder, pinch inwards again, turn it into a tiny planet, I'll take myself till I'm at the top, hold down the record button, zoom in and zoom out just by moving it left and right very quickly. Tap the tick to confirm. And you now have a tiny planet shot. For the ninth shot, I had the One X2 on the Best 360 selfie stick and I had it extended by three stems. I held it out to the side of me like this. And as I walked, I made sure that the One X2 lens was really close to the leaves. And as long as it's close, then you will see the leaves appear all around your inverted tiny planet. And to edit it, it's a little bit different from the rest and you'll see what I mean. So first of all, I'm going to trim this shot down to a four second shot. So I'll tap trim, go to where I want my shot to begin over here, tap the scissor icon and make a four second shot. Tap the scissor icon again and tap the tick to confirm. So now my shot is four seconds long and I'll go to the beginning of my shot and reframe to look at myself, put myself in the middle and add a pivot point here and leave it as ultra wide. Then I'll move one second later and add a pivot point here and tap viewfinder. Now you need to point your phone towards the ceiling and this will give you the inverted tiny planet effect. And there is no other way to do this. Believe me, I've tried. And then you need to pinch inwards to bring it into a inverted tiny planet. Then you need to turn around until you're at the bottom and then just hold down record till the end of the shot. And tap the tick to confirm. And if I play this back, you now have an inverted tiny planet effect. For the 10th shot, it was very similar to the previous bridge shot where I had the One X2 on the Best 360 selfie stick, fully extended. And then I just pointed the One X2 down towards the waterfall. And then I very slowly and gradually brought the One X2 up into the air and then gradually behind me. I'm going to start this once the camera is lowered, which is about here. So I'll tap the trim icon, the scissor icon, so this is where my shot will begin and then I will end it once the camera comes past me about here and tap the scissor icon and the tick icon. So I now have a six second shot. Then I'll go to the beginning of my shot, look down towards the water, add a pivot point here, change it to linear. Then I'll go two seconds forward to reveal more of the waterfall. Then a second later, I will turn it around to reveal myself, add a pivot point here. Then as it goes above my head, I'll add another pivot point here. And then at the end of the shot, I'll add another pivot point here looking back towards myself and I'm going to speed up the end so I can transition into the 11th shot. So about here, I'm going to add speed. I'll start the speed exactly at this pivot point. Choose eight times speed and drag it to the end. Tap the tick to confirm. 
And you now have a shot which looks like this. For the 11th shot, I had the One XT on the Best360 selfie stick fully extended. And then I just gradually brought the One X2 to follow the stream and then dipped the One X2 into the water and held it there. I want to start this shot when the camera is following this stream, which is about here. So I'll tap trim, scissor icon, and drag this until the camera is submerged underwater, about here. Tap the scissor icon and the tick icon to confirm. Then I'll go to the beginning of my shot, add a pivot point to look down at the stream, change it to linear, then two seconds later, follow the stream, and then continue the follow the stream here, and add a pivot point, then a second later, reframe to look towards this river, and then add a pivot point here to see the bubbles. To match the previous shot, I need to add speed at the beginning of this shot. So I'll tap the speed icon, go to the beginning of the shot, tap eight times speed, and drag the speed up until here. Tap the tick to confirm, and you now have a shot which looks like this. For the 12th shot, I used the One X2 on the Best360 selfie stick, and I fully extended the selfie stick all the way into the air, and then I just carefully walked for around a couple of minutes following the path. First, I'm going to trim this shot to get rid of the parts when I start and stop recording. So first, I'll tap the trim icon, then go to where I start walking, which is about here. Tap the scissor icon, then I will drag this all the way until the end, just before I stop walking, which is about here. Tap the scissors icon and tap the tick to confirm. Next, I'm going to add speed. So I'll go to the beginning of my shot, tap speed, 16 times speed, and drag this all the way till the end of my shot over here, and tap the tick to confirm. Then I'll go to the beginning of my shot, and the next thing I'm going to do is add pivot points. So this is the view I want to show my audience at the beginning, so I'll add a pivot point here. And then just as I turn into this route over here, I'm going to add a pivot point looking towards the tree. And the next thing I'm going to do is add a barrel roll effect. So to do this, I'm going to go to the end of the shot, add a pivot point here, and drag this towards the left until it's 360 degrees. So that will do one full rotation. And if I play this back, you now have a time shift and barrel roll video. The last shot is exactly the same as the previous shot, 1x2 on the Best360 selfie stick. The selfie stick was fully extended into the air, and then I just followed the path all the way around. The last shot is a time shift shot, and the first thing I'm going to do is trim the shot to start where I want the shot to begin, which is on the bridge, when I'm walking away from the bridge over here. So I'll tap the scissor icon here, and then I want to stop the shot just before I stop the recording, which is over here. So I'll tap the scissor icon here and tap the tick to confirm. Now it's good to have a plan of where you want to speed up your footage and where you want to slow it down. And this will make making a time shift much more easier so I know that 
during this time shift, I want to slow down the footage when I come to these leaves and also when this house is in shot, but I'll go a bit closer. Over here. So those are the two points I want to slow down when I see the house and when I see the tree. So now that I know this, I can add speed throughout my video. So I can go to the start of the shot, go to speed, tap 16 times speed, and I'm going to add this fast speed until I reach the house. Which is about here. Tap the tick to confirm the 16 times speed. Then I'll move forward one and a half second to leave it as normal speed. Then tap the 16 times hyperlapse again. So I'll add the fast speed until we reach the tree. Until it's close up with the leaves. Which is about here. So I'll tap the tick here, leave one and a half seconds as normal speed, then add 16 times speed again and add this until almost the end, leaving one and a half seconds as normal speed and tap the tick to confirm the speed here. So now that you have the speed added, next you need to add the pivot point to show which view you want to show your audience. So go to the beginning of the time shift and I'll reframe to look toward the end of the bridge. Add a pivot point here and change the view to linear. Then very carefully, I'm going to keep adding pivot points as the time shift moves. So right now it's changing direction and I'm going to add a pivot point here to make sure it's following this path. And I'll add another pivot point just before it changes direction. So over here, add a pivot point, and then it's going to turn this way. Then I'll turn, rotate the view to face this path where I'm walking next and add a pivot point here. So you can see I've added a pivot point before and after a corner and not during a corner. And this will give you a smoother turn around corners. And as I come down the path, just before I turn again, I'll add a pivot point here. Then I'll reframe to look towards the waterfall. And I'll just keep reframing as I go around to look towards the waterfall. And I'll add one more over here. Next, I'll reframe to look towards the house and add a pivot point here. Then I'll go to the edge where the speed stops, about here. Add a pivot point in the middle of the house. Then I'll go to the edge where the speed begins over here and add a pivot point to keep the house in the middle. Then I'll go forward to keep this house in view because it looks nice. And then I'll add another pivot point a little bit later to keep looking at these houses. Then after, I'll reframe to look towards the tree And as I come round, I'll add another pivot point to look at the tree. And just before the speed ends, I'll add a pivot point here, looking at the tree leaves. And over here where the speed begins, I'll add 
a pivot point to look towards the tree leaves. And then over here, I'll add a pivot point to look towards the tree. And this is when the shot comes to an end. So just after the speed finishes, I'm going to add a pivot point here to look towards the waterfall. And then at the end of the shot, I'll add another pivot point, change it to ultra wide. So now at the end of the shot, we'll have a zoom out effect. And you now have a time shift shot, which looks like this. Now that all the shots have been edited, I can now put all my shots together into a single timeline. So to do this, I will tap Stories, My Stories, and Create a Story, then tap the video icon to see all my videos, and now I need to find all my 13 shots. And this can be quite difficult because the thumbnails are really small. So I'm just going to go through them and find my 13 shots. So starting off with this one, I know that this is one of the shots I've edited because this shot has a scissor icon next to it. So if it has a scissor icon next to it, that means I have reframed and edited this shot. These other two shots are generated by the Insta360 app, giving you the front lens view and back lens view automatically. But you always want the one with the scissor icon because that's the one you've already edited. So now let's find the other 12 shots. So this is the bridge shot, and I'll tap the one with the scissor icon because it's the one I've reframed and edited already. And let's check this one. Yep, that's one of them. This is the ducks um, in the lake. That's one of them. This is another one with the birds in the water. This is the one with the reframe in the tree. This is the one where the camera comes out of the water. That's the tiny planet view. And you might get different views of the same shot, but you want the one with the scissor icon. This is one that I have not edited because there's no scissor icon, so I'll leave that. This is the time shift shot, and I will select this one. This is the bridge shot. This is the barrel roll shot. This is the inverted planet shot. So I need one more. And this is the water stream shot. So now I have all my 13 shots selected. I will tap the tick. And now the Insta360 app will add all these shots into a single timeline. So now the Insta360 app has put all the shots together into a single timeline. The next step is to switch your shots around so that they are in the right order. So this dock shot needs to move over here because it's the third shot. So I'm going to hold it down and reposition it over here. And then this shot is the fourth shot. So I'm going to hold this down and place it over here. This shot is the fifth shot, so I'm going to hold it down and put it over here. These two are in the right order. Then I have the tiny planet shot. Then it's the inverted tiny planet shot, so I need to bring this over here. Then it's this water shot. And then the stream shot. And then it's this barrel roll shot. And then finally, it's the time shift shot. So now I've put my shots in the correct order. Next, I'm going to change the aspect ratio to one by one. So this is perfect for my Facebook or Instagram feed. Next, I'm going to add music. So I'll tap music. And if you don't see the music tab, make sure that you don't have 
a shot selected. So tap the double arrow icon over here and then you'll get the music tab at the bottom. I'm going to add my own music, so I'll tap local. And I'll use this sound picker on my Samsung S10 to find all the music on my phone. And I'm going to select the music track which I downloaded for this video and tap done. And now I want to change when this music begins in the video, so I'll go to edit music and I'm going to change it to when the beat drops, which is over here. So I'm happy with that. So I'll tap the double arrow icon. Let's see what the video looks like so far. So scroll to the beginning of your timeline, tap the first video clip, tap play, and then you can watch it. If you want to edit one of your shots and make the shot a little bit shorter, then just tap the shot, tap tweak, trim, and I'll tap the right marker to trim the end of the video. And I'll trim this down to four seconds and tap the tick to confirm. If you want to reframe any of your shots, just tap the shot, go to frame and tap edit reframing. And here you can make adjustments to your pivot points. You can delete them or change the view and then tap the tick to confirm. The final thing left to do is to export your video in the highest quality video possible. So to do this, tap the export button in the top right hand corner, tap quick export, tap the cog wheel, tap the highest resolution, the highest bit rate and tap save. And now your video will begin exporting in the highest video quality possible. And that's it. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and leave a like if you did. And if you want to see more useful videos coming soon, then make sure to subscribe. If you are considering the Best360 monopod, it is in stock at the moment and it is on offer as well. So I'll leave a link to it in the video description. And when you do buy a Best360 monopod, it's not only going to help me make more useful videos for you, but it's also going to be the best companion for your 360 camera. So if you are considering a Best360 monopod, Thank you so much for your support in advance and I'll see you in the next video.